This is the, the second generation of the Philips Gentle Space and they've taken it down in size and the form factor and they've improved the efficacy to 110 lumens per watt. Nice design, suitable for a range of applications. Uh, price is obviously always important, not many people mention that now because the world of LED is all about design and form and output, but clearly there are other technologies, but overall a nice looking, nice looking engineered product. Well, what I quite like about this is the fact that uh, Philips quote the life in terms of the uh, light output as uh, 50%, 70% and 90%. And the reason that's important is that you can do your maintenance factor calculations properly. I think there's been quite a bit of attention played to um, things like glare, which can be a, a death knell of many high applications. Uh, it seems to have a square square-based light output distribution, which we always have an argument with Alan about that, about whether it's a useful fact or not. I think buildings tend to be square, so square distributions work better. I quite like the, uh, the, the, the ease of uh, installation, looks pretty good. A um, few things to concern, obviously, yeah, we have got obviously the heat sink fins in the back, which we've been sitting here for uh, about an hour now, and it doesn't seem to be, uh, it, I've still got skin on my hands, which is uh, good. Obviously, in some industries, uh, fins can can obviously lead to a build-up of uh, of dust, which I've seen problems in some industries where that's caused the, the death of a fixture. So it'd be good to know what thermal features are in there to protect against that. The one thing that strikes me about it is, is similar to the Zumptebel graft, um, you know, in the sort of the form factor, etc. Um, which is, you know, it's nice, nice, it's nice, small size, and um, the numbers look good as well. Okay guys, this is the new version of the master LED candle lamp. They've taken the power up to 6 watts from 4 watts, giving it 470 lumens, still 2700K. All the manufacturers making these have gone for a, a different look to try and uh, capture something of what incandescent used to look like. Um, and Philips have got this uh, this diamond sparkle thing, which looks like a little it kind of looks like a little chess piece, or like one of those tomatoes cut decoratively, um, which is you know I, I think uh, I'm not I'm not super keen on on how that looks when you look at it close up, but more important than that is uh, is the uh, the effect that you get, uh, which which I think is is actually uh, is actually great. People forget that old-fashioned candle lamps, which everybody loves, were desperately inefficient, whereas this is about 75 lumens a watt. Uh, it, one of the things that does concern me a little is that it's only available in two bases at the moment, we'll say. Um, and in, in the UK particularly, particularly in the market that it's targeted for, restaurants, hospitality, hotels, you'll find all four, all four bases. If I take us back to the days when Toshiba first brought out their candle, which was the first one, if I sum up the words of the great Lou Beddox, he said it has the soul of an incandescent. There was one problem that, that Toshiba didn't solve, and that was actually getting light uh, below the actual uh, candle. So this, the base tends to cause quite a bit of shadow. So this quite interesting optic feature uh, actually throw some light back underneath the candle. It's really smooth, it goes right down, I don't know what was that, a few percentage? Um, and that's just on a, on a, you know, a standard trailing edge, you know, foot dimmer. So, yeah, I like that. So, this is the new version of the Mile Wide, the Mile Wide 2. It's a you know, design-led uh, street light for residential streets mainly. There's a couple of points about this design which uh, may easily be overlooked. It's got a flat glass and so there's no upward light, so it minimises light pollution. The retrofit with simplistic controls, not, not kind of management controls, has a value now because whereas in the past local authorities would ignore back roads and basically just turn them off. Good quality, uh, low energy, high efficiency luminaires with simplistic controls make sense in a maintenance regime program. I think this is nice as well, it's a, it's a nice bit of design. You see a lot of, you, I've seen a lot of LED street lights recently that are, um, you, you see a lot of these that are a bit over designed, uh, kind of, you know, wear their heat sinks on their sleeves kind of thing, it's like sort of heat sink chic. But the problem is with, with street lights, you know, they're designed for streets where people live and you know, not everybody is a, is a lighting product designer and appreciates that, 
sort of thing. In fact, uh, a lot of people quite hate these you know, futuristic UFO looking streetlights that are getting installed where they live. And I can see this you know, uh, fitting in quite well in sort of, you know, middle England. <coughs> the thermals have been quite well thought about actually. So if you take the LED array, you can see how the, uh, the f these uh, essentially use a transfer path to take the heat from the LED out into the, uh, out into the casting. So that's quite good with the additional protection of a, a thermal sensor. So if the unit does get too hot, it'll scale back the power coming out of the driver. So that's actually pretty uh, common sense, but it's amazing how many people actually don't, don't incorporate them in the driver. Gasket, yeah, we've got a, a little breathe vent down at the base. Nice single piece optic. Um, so yeah, so this hopefully should be pretty competitively priced or very profitable, which way. <laughs> LMX, which looks a bit like, you know, fairy lights from the future, but it's, uh, this is a more intense version than the last one, and um, this is aimed at uh, apps in building facades and, and, and video screens. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting product. There's, a, there's um, quite a number of these type of products now coming out onto the market. Um, and they're all going to be clamouring for output, uh, depth of colour and everything else. And I think, I think one of the important things is, is the development of LED and colour and, and importantly designers thinking of different applications because that's the kind of one thing about LED, it, it does give you the option of, of applications you naturally wouldn't think of. Uh, so it's all in the imagination. There's one thing the Chinese love is when they build a tall building is to cover it with LED. So this is a, uh, essentially geared for that market. Um, challenges with media facades is reliability and the durability of the product. And if you, if you go to uh, a lot of Chinese installations, you'll see that after a few years, um, yes, they don't work. So yeah, lots of people have LED systems. But the question is how durable are they? How will they last? So this one seems to be um, quite robust in the way the waterproofing's been done um, and some nice accessories, little clip-on uh, diffusers to help with that daylight viewing, keep the sun away from the, from the uh, system itself. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to explore how, you know, the, what the long-term reliability of the system is, so, which again is, is for me is everything in a media facade. This latest version is quite a bit more intense than the last one. Having intense uh, LED modules, which you can then dim down to the appropriate brightness for your location, is, a, is an extremely important feature. Yeah, I think this is a I think this is a a, a nice product uh, for what it is. Uh, I think the uh, the output is is quite impressive. Um, I'm a, I'm a bit bar humbug about colour change um, and media facades. I, I don't really think the whole world needs to look like Blackpool. Uh, does the world need more media facades? No. Um, does it need better ones? Maybe. So uh, yeah, I can I can I can see a place for it. The four products we looked at today are basically you know serious iterations on on, on the first generation. Well, just because a manufacturer produced a high bear last year, they can't park the design. They've got to produce the next generation to capture LED improvements, uh, reduce the size of the form factor. Uh, obviously reduce the bill of materials, so you know, smarter design, so we've seen today single piece optics, uh, quite intelligent thermal design, um, and, and just bringing that together to produce some quite sleek looking products. The one that stands out for me is, is the gentle space. Um, they've taken the form factor down, they haven't released prices yet, but I suspect you know, they've taken a lot of cost out of it in terms of the bill of materials and the price that it, it, it's going to be on the market for. And I think, you know, if they can get it at the right price, I think they're going to sell shed loads of them because it's, it's addressing a problem. It's, you know, I would be very worried if I was making, you know, 400 watt HID high base with those sort of kit coming onto the market. Really interesting, I thought today, was the, uh, the mile wide lantern, uh, a really nice piece of design. Uh, it's, it's not over the top, it's not the kind of flashy design that's going to that, uh, turn people off, you know, in, in sort of residential street lighting applications. 
so I thought that was really nice and uh, you know good thermal management going on there too. Well, it's been deliberately designed for it to be controllable so you can control it due to traffic flow, due to people are being around, you can switch it off after midnight or dim it down so it's very easily controllable and that's a real big advance. And the other thing is the flat glass on it so there's no uh, upward light so it doesn't contribute towards light pollution which is uh, an important issue nowadays. The candle particularly stood out for me. It's a good design. It's kind of moving to where um, the replacement of incandescent becomes almost natural to people. Price is obviously going to be key but as a product very good. Overall good set of products.